nomination to be President of the United States of America. And with this election, Our nation, our nation with this election, has a precious, fleeting opportunity to move past the bitterness, cynicism, and divisive battles of the past, a chance to chart a new way forward. I will always stand up for Israel's right to defend itself and I will always ensure Israel has the ability to defend itself because the people of Israel must never again face the horror that a terrorist organization called Hamas caused on October 7, including unspeakable sexual violence and the massacre of young people at a music festival. At the same time, what has happened in Gaza over the past 10 months is devastating. So many innocent lives lost. Desperate, hungry people fleeing for safety over and over again. The scale of suffering is heartbreaking. President Biden and I are working to end this war such that Israel is secure, the hostages are released, the suffering in Gaza ends, and the Palestinian people can realize their right to dignity, security, freedom, and self-determination. I will make sure that we lead the world into the future on space and artificial intelligence, that America, not China, wins the competition for the 21st century, and that we strengthen, not abdicate, our global leadership. Trump, on the other hand, threatened to abandon NATO. He encouraged Putin to invade our allies said Russia could, quote, do whatever the hell they want. Five days before Russia attacked Ukraine, I met with President Zelensky to warn him about Russia's plan to invade. I helped mobilize a global response over 50 countries to defend against Putin's aggression. President, I will stand strong with Ukraine and our NATO allies. My mother kept a strict budget. We lived within our means, yet we wanted for little. And she expected us to make the most of the opportunities that were available to us and to be grateful for them. Because as she taught us, opportunity is not available to everyone. That's why we will create what I call an opportunity economy, an opportunity economy where everyone has the chance to compete and a chance to succeed. Whether you live in a rural area, small town, or big city. Donald Trump is a weak man pretending to be strong. He is a small man pretending to be big. He's a faithless man pretending to be righteous. He's a perpetrator who can't stop playing the victim. He puts on, listen, he, he, he puts on quite a show, but there is no real strength there. As a conservative and a veteran, I believe true strength lies in defending the vulnerable. It's in protecting your family. It's in standing up for our Constitution and our democracy. That, that is the soul of being a conservative. It used to be the soul of being a Republican. But Donald Trump 
has suffocated the soul of the Republican Party. Some have questioned why I've taken the stand I have. The answer is really simple, ladies and gentlemen. We must put country first. And tonight, and tonight, as a Republican speaking before you, I'm putting our country first. Because the fact is, I do belong here. I know Kamala Harris shares my allegiance to the rule of law, the Constitution, and democracy. And she is dedicated to uphold, upholding all three in service to our country. No matter how the Supreme Court tries to roll back on civil rights, no matter what the amount of money they have, we are here because others fought and suffered for us, and we vowed tonight we won't go back. This November, we will go forward to fulfill the promise of a just and fair nation. We have the constitutional right to vote. In fact, it is a human right. So let us use it. I want you to walk with us. I want you to march with us. I want you to vote with us. And together, and let me tell you, this is going to be so beautiful. And together, on November 5th, we will usher in Kamala Harris and Tim Walls into the White House. I so wish that mommy could be here tonight. I can just see her smiling, saying how proud she is of Kamala. And then, without missing a beat, she say, that's enough. You got work to do. She would tell all of us to roll up our sleeves and get to work, to elect a leader who sees the potential in each of us, a leader who cares for all of us, a leader who fights for every one of us. Our Democratic nominee, my big sister, the next president of the United States, Kamala Harris.